happy to see this boat. It's awesome. This is really cool. I like this. She's lovely. Oh my gosh, you're gonna really like that. Wow, she's really in nice shape. This is a pretty terrific boat. Aren't those handsome? Everything is fit perfectly. Oh my lord. Hi there, this is Captain Ku and my old sailing buddy Randy. Join us as we travel hither and yon as we look for some great deals on classic boats and learn a little with each one. I can't, I can't tell where the pants end and the forklift Well, I was just begins. noticing this. I should get one of these or at least find out what the color chip is for this thing. <laughs> Wouldn't that look great on the Jag? Wow, what a find. Uh, we have a John Alden uh, design shop boat here. Ooh. John Alden was born in 1884 and then he died uh, in uh, 1962. So he kind of missed, uh, you know, the big resurgence in fiberglass boats and new design. He was born in Troy, New York, and uh, then his pam family moved to Sakonet, uh, and he started sailing down there, and then one day his dad took him up to Gloucester and showed him some of the fishing fleet there, and he really got the bug about sailboats and about fishing schooners. He wanted to go to Naval Architecture School, so he went to MIT, and then uh, did apprentice work with Starling Burgess, famous J-Boats uh, designer, and uh, he liked the schooner uh, style of boat. He liked good heavy sea going boats. He liked two masts. He loves two masts. He went off and, and uh, took one of his designs and they actually won the uh, the Bermuda race I think in 1928 or so. Um, and one of his designs actually won the race about 50 years later. His office in subsequent years uh, in 19 uh, about 1970s uh, got involved with the Fuji boat company in Japan, Alden uh, ended up designing with their head designer whose name was Niels Helborg. They sent designs over to uh, Japan to have them build these boats under the Alden auspices. So today we have a particularly interesting one and it's really cool to see. They actually did two versions of this boat. I'm really happy to see this boat. It's awesome and you're you're just not going to believe the amount of room. But let's go take a look at this puppy. Take a look back here at Gypsy. A great name for a boat that's going to go sail. A couple of nods to uh, the uh, current design of thinking. Here, this is still uh, pretty deep forward. Very full bilges on each side, so you're going to have a lot of room to store stuff. And I think she weighs in around uh, 30,000 pounds with about 8,700 pounds of ballast. But she's cut away here. You'll see the blocks supporting the forward end of the keel. Yep. Uh, there's three or four of them right there, and if you notice down here, there's just one. And this boat is set up so it's level, which tells you that it's, the keel is higher there and lower here, and they refer to that as sort of a drag of the keel. Okay, you can just sense that drag. And part of the reason here is for maneuverability. We don't have fin keels and spade rudders, but they wanted to cut the bow away so they could turn this boat, and then this will help it turn at the aft end too a little bit. Notice this big block here. Uh, this has the combination uh, propeller and depth sounder here. This may be a forward-facing uh, depth sounder. Uh, while we're up close here, her, her bottom is really, all in all, pretty darn good. And I wouldn't touch it to go cruising. Owen Stevens, among other things, said he wasn't crazy about uh, spade rudders because they were usually just hung in one place. Well, here we've got two big gudgeons down here. Massive in that heel place down there coming off the back of the keel and then this mid mid size So this thing is really anchored and oh my god it, I don't it's it's hard to express until you're actually right here next to it. It's just solid big three-bladed prop This is a real power prop. This is going to push you through any bad tide or, or current On the boat and these blades really come outside see how far they come outside of the the aperture great stability Long waterline length, and we do like that, don't we? Um, and we think we've got uh, about 30, oh, 33, 33 feet of waterline here. Okay. Let's just take a good look at the top sides. She's been painted a couple years ago with epiphanes. Okay. And a lot of people will do that themselves because they can roll and tip it. This is not the high gloss that we've seen on some of the yachts, in the, especially those in the tennis court that are stored and that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Where it's just like... Amazing. Blinding. Right. right. 
serviceable beyond belief. Just keep that paint on there for a long time. Back here, as you notice, we have a transom. We have a, a nice piece of counter coming out here uh, to this really, this is a classic oh, sort of heart-shaped transom on her. And it's really quite pretty, isn't it? And I like the, the, the name on the, uh, on the wood piece. Here are your trail boards, all the squiggly squigglies. Why do they do that? Just decorative. Okay. Just decorative. Actually, at one point, uh, the trail boards literally would go out and they'd be part of a supportive piece to the bowsprit on boats. And you'll see them actually, I don't know how I can show you this, but they'd kind of come out like this, and like, like so, and the bowsprit would sit in between them. Okay. Uh, they were part of the, they themselves were not the uh, supporting effort, but they were decorative of that long piece sticking on either side. There's a massive, massive bowsprit up there. I could sleep out there. We got a nice bob stay here too, don't we? And the other thing that's re remarkable about this boat, let's just not miss the lovely clipper bow. Oh yeah. This clipper bow is just a classic, uh, and there's a flare out here to the bow that will help keep the boat dry. So when she drives into the water, that flare is just gonna part the waters and throw it right out to the side. There we have a bow thruster on here. Yep. And that's handy that's for a, a big you, boat. You like might this. say that sort of makes up for fin keels and spade rudders. I think we should go topside. What do you say? Oh, I think we definitely should. Yeah. Here we go. We love the subscribers. Yeah, more subscribers means that we're going to get recommended to more people. And so that helps spread the love and spread the word about old classic boats and what we're doing. So every little bit helps. Thanks again. Hey, Rende. Yeah. Come on up, pal. All right. You might have noticed the, the tow rail on the boat beautifully varnished, but needs to be re-varnished. This almost looks like somebody's put a coat over the, the varnish. That means that moisture has gotten underneath the, the varnish coating. And on some of the rails, there's bare spots. So we're, we're seeing a little deferred maintenance so far, but it doesn't bother me one bit. You know what we like here, first of all? Two masts? Two masts. Two masts, right. yeah. I guessed it. We love a catch. And I really do love a catch because I can just hoist that mizzen up here and I can roll out a staysail or a, uh, an inner staysail, storm staysail, uh, and just cruise along without doing any work at all. <laughs> One thing you'll notice about this boat, Rande, is this wheel. Uh, they used it on the schooners, and I think part of the reason they did it was that it was very simple, and it was a direct, solid drive. It did give you feedback. It's a little funny, but you get used to it. You can also sit to one side or the other, and still sear the boat quite handily. And this boat has a marvelous dodger, by the way. Look at the, look at the height and size of that. As we said, you're gonna always can get some spray off the bow, though not as much on this boat as some of the more modern boats. But any spray that does come over, it's not gonna find its way to the cockpit. Also, too, you see behind me a bimini that's folded up right now. Yep. This boat is, is set up so that you can enclose the entire cockpit. Deep combings, again, uh, we have a, a bridge deck here, so we're gonna be pretty safe in case of a knockdown. Just one or two small washboards for the companionway, we'll shut that right up. Uh, we have two Lumar uh, 55s, two-speed uh, self-tailing winches. This little window is has got some uh, controls to it. As I think that might be your autopilot controls. Look at the massiveness of these castings. Oh, the, oh this is the autopilot right here. So the autopilot, it's a Raymarine autopilot, and it's got a chain drive that goes around the shaft. You see that? Yeah. So when the autopilot engages, it's going to move that chain. The lazarette is huge. We can get right down to the probably the uh, any stuffing boxes down there of any sort. Uh, now this is a very serious fender board there, Ooh, isn't that's it? That's very pretty for a fender yeah. board. Yeah. He's also got back here. Look at this, a little generator. Here's something else left over from the old days. This is an Edson set of. Davits here. They're cast aluminum. I think my father may have had some of those on his boat back in 1949. This is nice, an old old fashioned style boarding ladder, and it's set right near the stern. And when you want to get somebody back on board, this is really good. Now, Randy, you're required to have a ship's bell uh, at all times. And you don't have to ring it for the time of day every day, but it is a safety factor if you're in a fog. There's a number of times that you ring this. I can't forget them for what size boat you are, but it might be, be something like <coughs> fixed gooseneck for the mizzen, a nice height here. You know the mizzen boom is going to be 
Oh my gosh, almost a foot over your head right here. We've got a lot of Ray Marine Electronics on here. They're listed in the inventory on the boat, and there's an array of, of uh, additional, probably, uh, sail and speed and depth down here as well, right on this little lower bulkhead on front of the uh, bridge deck. This is a pretty terrific boat. I'm going to head forward. You want to come yeah, take a look? Yeah, let's go check it out. This gate. That's called a pelican hook, by the way. You just clamp the, the, the jaws together and slide the little ring up over it. What do we see here? Oh, uh, yeah, some degradation of the lifelines. Yeah, Old yeah. School. All the plastic has gotten cooked and fried off. And that's why they are recommending everybody go with just solid 1x19 wire or they're using the Dyneema these days. Well, we've got a lot of teak on this boat and it's really in nice shape. If you notice, you can run your fingers over the, the thigh call, which is the black bedding between each board. Yep. And you'll feel slightly raised. Ideally, that should be smooth. I'm walking by a very long uh, whisker pole here, and it's an extendable. If you look forward, you look at the size of the J dimension, which is normally the dimension from the mast to the bow of the boat. In this case, it goes about four or five feet further. What that's telling me is that you're going to have a really big jib to wing out. We're going by a pin rail here. This is left from the old days. If you needed anything quickly on those lines, now these are just fenders or bumpers, whatever we want to do. Uh, you didn't have to undo the whole thing. You would simply just pull the pin out, boom, like so, and then it was free. What we have here is a cutter rig with uh, the inner staysail, uh, which has got two separate grooves on it again, just like the head stay, so that you can put up additional sails over the other one. And it has its own jib boom right here, which will, uh, which will tack back and forth all by itself. There's a track on the deck down right behind the hatch. If you wanted to go sailing, you could hoist just the mizzen and this guy and don't touch anything, just tack back and forth. We have a huge Maxwell uh, 2000 windlass up here with a giant rope drum on it on this side. Here's your gypsy on this side uh, and a place to hand crank it. It has a, a back and forth uh, drive on it so you can pull up to your anchorage from the cockpit with a hand controller and let the anchor down. Would you like I to go? I don't love out? those lifelines, but well, I would not hold on to the lifelines. But well, I want to see if you fit out there. This there is uh, sort of like you putting me in the V-berth, right? Yeah, that seems fair. And I'm going to stand over here, so uh, it looks like you're really far away, right? I am. Randy, <laughs> how do you like it out there? It's amazing. And you know, with those little uh, perforations in the teak, uh, when you hit a wave. It's a bidet. <laughs> it's, what a fun boat. Here we are at the mast. They've got a little tiny spinnaker track on the front of the mast. You see, it's not very tall at all. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to be racing, so you don't need the full length of a spinnaker pole track to reset your spinnaker. Can you hear that? Yep. That's my favorite sound. No, my favorite. It's one of my favorite one. sounds. For doing your breast lines, your spring lines, that's a nice fair lead for them right there. It's bolted to the rail, and you've got two cleats here so you don't have to double up your spring lines onto one cleat. I think it's time I invite you below. Oh, yeah. Let's... So follow me. All right, Randy. Yeah. Come on down, buddy. All right. This boat is 45 years old. And look at the woodwork in here. It's all beautiful, all sort of a satin finish to it. All the paint on the uh, cabin sides is smooth and clean, no signs of drips. And I know you like these uh, deck beams yeah. above us here. Aren't those handsome? Beautiful. And do we feel like we're in an old-time ship maybe a little bit? We have a, a, a pop-up table here. Not pop-up, excuse me, but the, the leaves fold up, and it's really good size. Everything is fit perfectly. I don't know how else to put it. It's just smooth, so smooth. Look at look, look, one finger. I'm opening this thing up. And, oh, I've got a nice chain plate here. You want to take a look at this? Because these have all been addressed on the boat. They had some little bit of deck leakage on it, apparently, and took care of that. Everything's been replaced. This has two brand new Grocco manual toilets. And the head on this boat is set up so that when you finish with it, you pump everything into a holding tank, and then it's macerated, and then it can be pumped out when you're past three miles offshore or at dockside. Overhead on this is sort of a stipple kind of effect, and I like it because it, it uh, cuts down on the glare. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, the mast has stepped on deck on this boat. Oh, no. And here's the uh, compression post. Look at the size of that. 
look at the deck beam going across to help further support it on on top of the whole bulkhead i'm sitting on new cushion covers these are ultra suede it's a white an off white color we have storage behind all these things there we go now huh. look at that ubiquitous and look at the varnish on the inside of the flap here there's one opening port on that side i'm sorry there's not one on this side but we do have uh the overhead hatch and then there's a hatch forward this boat carries 140 gallons of fuel almost half again as much as we did on the pb and the thing i really like it carries 250 gallons of water look at the expanse of this galley yeah that's like <sighs> 10 this feet plate wear and everything all has its own specified holders for it these things aren't going to come out. Let's open this puppy up for a minute. Man knows what to drink on this boat, but look how, look how deep that is. This is apparently a keel-cooled, somehow, uh, refrigeration, 12 volt. So what does that mean, keel-cooled? Uh, well, it means they're going to exchange heat, get the heat out of the system by running it through some piping or something down in the keel. But how it works on this boat, I don't know. Single sink. It's not on the center line. Uh, and I would take a look below here to see, is there a valve there for it? Yep. I would probably shut that valve if I were on a port tack because yep. it would be healing over like so. Would an anti-siphon trap help prevent that? I don't know that there's enough head pressure in the drain to let water flow down and blow up past the anti-siphon. The best thing just remember to turn it off. I'm going to tell you something here. Yeah. I peaked before you came here. Okay. I hadn't been on the boat till you got here, but I came to take a look and... Oh. What do you believe? <laughs> it already came pre-installed. It was pre-installed. This man, I think he's going to get an extra point for that. Maybe two. Did he yeah. gets two on the end of this? I think, I think so. I think so. Three burner gas uh, stove, and we use uh, propane on here. Let's just see if they cooked here. Yeah. And here we have the Randa ubiquitous oh, yeah. pan storage with an additional trap down there. <gasps> oh, my Lord. Look at the depth of that. Mm, wow. So Randy, here's something we haven't quite seen, and that's the size of the uh, uh, utensil drawers here. <laughs> this is really cool. I like this. Now, notice this. I'm taking one finger, two fingers. I'll just use one finger and slide that Very door open. Nice. Take a peek in here. I kind of want to see it with a scale of a human. Well, I'll get a body in there for sure and give you some perspective. This is uh, an award-winning quarter berth style aft cabin in an aft cockpit boat. It's, look at the size of these pillows. They're fitting right across the whole bed here. So you've got a good size double. Another big drawer. They like big drawers. I, it's, I just love the workmanship here. Yep. This cabin comes with its own head. And it, that's no small head, is it? No, let's see, uh, how, let's see how big it is. It's very big and I'm gonna have a, a little seat on the throne here, which is a brand new Groco. Uh, Molded in sink, again, storage area for uh, an old toothpaste and stuff. Uh, I've got a handheld shower. Nice big shower grate down here. Uh, nice size mirror. And right here, they've got a curtain that's gonna slide right around here, and it's gonna keep water from hitting the door or hit going through the vents. I love this cabin. And I'm kind of noticing something else. It's kind of a twofer. A twofer? Isn't it? What is this door? No, doing? this door goes to, you'll have to, oh, Rante, hold on a second. Yep. Come in. This is what I call a hanging locker. <laughs> look, look at the size of this hanging locker. Wow. This is unbelievable. Who, who has a hanging locker with full headroom? It just doesn't happen. I think it's a walk-in closet. It is. A, I, in my case, it was a step-in closet, yeah. but it's fantastic. Rande, yeah. I promised you an engine room, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to believe this one either. This is phenomenal. They've got a little companionway here. We can just lift right up and you know, it gets hooked up in a little sky hook there. Yeah. Well, this is all a new electronic panel here and there's been a whole lot of new wiring done on the boat as well. I want you to take a look down in this engine room and I'll get out of your way as best I can. All right. The whole engine room has been soundproofed and you have to do a little bit of a limbo here. Yep. But there goes Rande, and he's sitting straddling a, a Yanmar 4, 4 JH4, I think it is, something like that. Yep. And that looks sort of sparkly, doesn't it? It's very sparkly. Very sparkly. Definitely very sparkly. Very sparkly. Look at the water intake by your right knee, and you can probably get to everything else there, too. Now, this engine is running on a V-drive. Do you notice that? I can't see it from here. But well, you don't see a shaft where you are, do you? I don't. 
That's because the shaft turns around at the front end of this engine and then goes back down underneath it and then re changes the direction of the shaft and goes and pushes that great big propeller. I think I'm looking down into the bills and there might be a, just a tiny skim of water down there, but the motor engine, look at the engine mounts on this thing. That <laughs> post right beside you there, that's the compression post, by the way, for the mizzen mast. That guy, just so you that's know right what here. that is. Well, you better get out of there. Come on out, we've got okay. to look at some other things. We talked about the head system on here. What we've also did, we pulled up these floorboards to just take a look down underneath the cabinetry. See what it looks like. And in general, it's just spick and span like new. Uh, I would also add that these yes. floorboards came up better than any floorboards we've ever... They came up, they were perfectly fit so that they would stay in place if the boat's healing. Look at that bilge. It's all been painted and coated. It's not pretty, but it's clean. First things first, I could, if you wanted to, I could climb in there. <laughs> Another Again, yeah. here we have a really nice big head with shower, and oh. we have a twofer we again. A twofer. <laughs> right. But this is one of the bigger heads, isn't it? 45 footer, here's the shower head right here, and it has a little curtain to pull around to keep the water from you know trailing out through the doors. And look at the nice big teak grate, that's really large size. And I'll give you a sense of scale here. We'll put the cabin on the, on the throne, uh, and uh, that, I've got a little lock on that door and I've got a little lock on the other door. So I can have privacy. I've got the hand pump right beside me. It's got a tiny little sink there. Well, you just got to put your teeth stuff in here, you know? <laughs> Storage. Uh, you can see where the uh, bulkheads have been, have been uh, tied into the hull here. I'm going to say goodbye to you here. And as they say... Sayonara. Sayonara. Until we meet again. I'm stepping out. Look at the size of this. I mean, just... There's, how big is that? Yeah, it's seven, giant bigness. Feet, yeah, I mean, really big. You could put the whole family up here, get yeah. all the kids up here, and they'd have a hatch for, for fresh air, which we'd like to have in here. And there's a couple of opening ports. Look at this nice little hanging locker here. See that little touch down there at the bottom? This little piece right here, <laughs> instead of just throwing your boots in there and having them fall out every time you open the door, yeah. there's a little boot catcher. Randy? What do you think? If I do the engine room. Okay. Ah, there we go. Ooh, I was going to take my shoes up, but I'm not going to. Just because they're really clean today. <laughs> That's a lie. I'm just touching my heels. That's a lie. I'm hardly touching this. Randy, I'm in. I'm in, buddy. And, and with a pillow. This might be my boat. I am going to uh, shut this multi-purpose door. What's the door? It's part of the hanging locker. Oh, door. is that beautiful? Mm, well, listen, uh, I guess the phrase in Japan is sayonara. Is that correct? That is correct. So sayonara, pal. Sayonara. And uh, don't bother me anymore. No. We saw an amazing boat with two masts thank you and it had a clipper bow right and it had a beautiful interior and a very comfortable cockpit seaworthy looking as all get out and uh, this is a Fuji 45 she was a very large 45 footer and exquisitely uh, detailed below decks she had a a two for head, right? Yep. She had an aft double cabin ahead of the aft cockpit. Yep. And it had its own head in there as well. Yeah. And a hanging locker we'll never forget. <laughs> we were really, really blown away. I think I've got to give that a rating. Boom. I know that boat floats. Yep. That's a 10. Niels Helberg did a wonderful job of, of, uh, of putting this boat together. The boat's getting another another 15 right off the bat. Oh, uh, Randy, I'm giving that another 15 on top of that. <laughs> this it's kind a of 40. a first. Yeah. She needs some work, but if everything else works on there the way it looks like it works. Oh, hey, how about that engine room? Uh. <laughs> did, did, did you want to move into that? Uh. I could spend a couple of days in there, yeah. Okay, and we have one more award for this boat. We slid over the cider, and there was a can of Dinny right there. <laughs> he gets two extra points for that. 42. 42. 42 for a 1977 Fuji 45 fiberglass uh, antique deck. Beautiful catch. Let's go sailing, huh? Yeah.